here with more House Minority Whip Steve Scalise. Steve Scalise, Congressman, good morning to you. Welcome. You know, this whole thing sort of took on another chapter yesterday when you had Josh Hawley talking about this whistleblower complaint of this coordinated effort between the technology giants across the internet to monitor our activity in hopes of directing what we can and cannot see. Yes, yeah, Sandra, good to be with you, by the way. But big tech's uh, both coordination, collusion, and censorship against conservatives was on full display in that hearing yesterday. It was very concerning, uh, not only seeing some of the things that were pointed out, that they blocked conservatives on just opinions, and yet uh, the, the Ayatollah in Iran can say anti-Semitic things that aren't flagged, uh, and yet they won't even commit. And I think Senator Cruz asked, would you commit to giving us the metrics, the numbers on how many conservatives have you blocked versus how many liberals have you blocked? They have that data. They just wouldn't commit to showing it. And yet they sit there and say they want to be transparent. Of course, they don't want to be transparent. They want to continue to censor conservatives because the bulk of their employees are liberal. That's not what they should be. They should be running a liberal social media platform. The New York Post. And I think it's begging the question. Yeah. The New York Post obviously reacting this morning to Jack Dorsey admitting what he said was a mistake uh, in the censoring of that New York Post Hunter Biden story. Although the New York Post is quick to point out this morning, the mistakes always seem to be in, against conservatives in favor of Democrats. CEO Jack Dorsey, it writes, admits that Twitter made a mistake in censoring the Post reporting on Hunter Biden's overseas business dealings. It's a start, but he will still... He was still playing games, saying the move was corrected within 24 hours when Twitter actually kept the post account locked for up to two full weeks. And that that was the case, Congressman. You're right, Sandra, Twitter's bias against conservatives was not a mistake. It's a bias. Uh, they have a, a very large majority, somewhere around over 90 percent of all of their employees who donate to campaigns donate to Democrats. And, and so, OK, everybody's got political views, but you're supposed to check those at the door if you're acting as a publisher. Uh, they're not just letting content out there, by the way. Uh, the idea that they should have those Section 30, 230 protections uh, against uh, being sued, it shouldn't apply if you're starting to pick and choose whose views you're going to put out there in the public square. That's what they're doing. Their bias was on full display. They ought to fix it. Otherwise, they're going to start losing customers. There will be a conservative alternative to these social media sites if they continue to be biased against conservatives. Here's more from Jack Dorsey in that hearing yesterday. Listen. We made a quick interpretation, using no other evidence, that the materials in the article were obtained through hacking, and according to our policy, we blocked them from being spread. Upon further consideration, we admitted this action was wrong and corrected it within 24 hours. So I will point out that based on that sort of admission of a mistake that was made um, that not only did that story stay up for for two full weeks or was it uh, you blocked from seeing that story the new york blocked. post account was blocked but this morning the president is actively tw uh, tweeting very actively tweeting i should say on election results and some of these challenges in various states and twitter is actively flagging the president's tweets there was no committal from from twitter yesterday that they would discontinue any of that Right. Look, if you do something accidentally, that can be a mistake. If you do it time and time again, it's deliberate. It's intentional. And so the real question is, where is the transparency, Sandra? Uh, what's happened to those employees that continue to uh, to block conservatives, to, uh, in essence, discriminate against conservatives? Uh, clearly, those employees have a bias that are in that ring, that you know, circle uh, star chamber that are, are the ones that are blocking all this stuff. Uh, shouldn't you at least have uh, an mm. equal group of conservatives and liberals in the group that makes the decisions. And if you don't, uh, you ought to hold people accountable. Some mm -hmm. of those people should be fired or removed from their positions, and they haven't yet. That needs to happen. Congressman, as we do see the president continue to challenge the results in some of these states, now a partial recount uh, we're hearing from the Trump campaign is going to be requested in the state of Wisconsin. Some Republicans are urging the president to work with the Biden team on, on transitioning. Where do you stand in all this? What do you want to see the president do? Well, I think the fact that the president's exposing that you've got these major discrepancies in how states run elections, I'll tell you, this is the thing that undermines public confidence the most. You can take very large states like Texas and Florida. Both of them had their results within a matter of hours on election night. 
and a lot of people turned out, huge turnout, a lot of mail-in ballots. And then you take states like Pennsylvania and Michigan that are smaller than Texas and Florida, and, and they still haven't certified, they still haven't finished counting in some of the cases, and major discrepancies are showing up in some of their large cities. And they, I mean, it took days for them to even come up with an initial count, and Trump was ahead for days and days, and then all of a sudden he's behind. That's what undermines public confidence. Why can some large states get it right mm. and tell us by 10 o'clock that night, and some states, four days later, you're seeing the lead change dramatically. It just looks very fishy. I got and it. I so you want, you want, you want the Trump's challenges raising. to continue on every legal vote counted. But the question was, do you want the president to work with Biden on the transition as that goes on? Or do you want to break I'd like history? to see President Trump do what he's doing is raise awareness. Look, there's going to be a time when the electors are certified. That time okay. hasn't come, by the way. But it's coming soon. But in the meantime, at least let's try to normalize our laws so that people can find out on election night and you don't start looking like a third world country in some of these states where weird things are happening. They're kicking poll watchers out of rooms. What's going on in that room if you're kicking the people out who are legally supposed to be okay. able to watch what you're doing? Congressman, I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you.